matte black with gold accents. This is the familiar, understated Pro Art look, and this here is the Pro Art LC360. Welcome to Machines and More. Today we're gonna take a look at a newer release. This is ASUS's Pro Art LC360. It's a look of cooler with a 360 millimeter radiator featuring a distinct and dare I say refreshingly low key appearance. And it's got three very high performance fans. Some of you might be familiar with ASUS's Pro Art line. It's uh, their more creator focused lineup. Of course, that doesn't mean it's only for creators. For example, their Pro Art GPUs, they have been immensely popular amongst SFF builders because of the slimmer, uh, cooler dimensions there. This liquid cooler though, you won't be finding it in SFF builds anytime soon because 360 millimeters is a rather long radiator. It's gonna be ideal for mid towers where you could uh, mount it at the front of the case or top mount it. But here I've tested it in the Lian Li A3M ATX. It's a compact case where a 360 millimeter radiator can fit on top. And if you're looking to do a build, in this case, or something like ASUS's AP201, this uh, cooler here would be a good candidate. Before I begin, I did want to thank ASUS for working with the channel and providing our test unit here today. And I did want to let you know that my reviews are never paid for or sponsored by the manufacturers, so you can expect independent and objective feedback in all my reviews. And make sure you're subscribed to get more content like this. Let's see what you get in this stylish black and gold box. Perhaps the first thing you'll notice is the individually boxed Alpha Cool fans. This is actually rather unique. Within this ensemble, ASUS is using the high performing Alpha Cool Apex Stealth metal fans, which I do plan on using in an upcoming NKSM2 build. Uh, but unlike many AIOs where you get a rebadged or rebranded sort of run of the mill fan, they're using a third party option here, which if you've ever bought an off the shelf AIO just to swap on the performance fans of your choice, this choice is actually quite nice because you don't have to pay for fans you're not gonna use. So the Apex metal fans, they spin up to 3000 RPM. They are matte black with bat black blades, at least the ones they include are. They actually come in a variety of shades. Uh, but th this uh, choice does match the aesthetic quite well. You also have the 27 millimeter thick 360 radiator with pump block. The rubber tubing, it's quite thick, much more substantial than your typical AIO tubing. The pump block is 49 millimeters tall. It's got a copper cold plate. It's important to note this is not an Ace Attack unit, unlike their ROG series AAOs and some of their other AAOs. It does feature a three-phase motor, ceramic sleeve bearing, and having tested it extensively, I can tell you the pump is very quiet. It's much better than any Ace Attack unit I've ever seen or really heard. Uh, the pump has just two cables you'll need to connect. One is to a USB 2 header, and the other one is to a fan header so that you can control the pump speed. Other than those, the cabling for the entire unit is quite simple because the fans are even daisy chainable, so you can just hide the cabling on the unseen side of the radiator. Uh, one thing to note is that each one of these fans is spec for a max of 0.5 amps. So if you don't, if you do want to connect all these three fans back to one header, absolutely make sure you have at least a two amp header. If not, then you'll definitely want to split off one, at least one to a different header. Uh, these are high RPM fans, so even though you may not regularly run these at a high RPM, within a, with a spec like this, there's always the possibility you could inadvertently end up damaging your one amp fan header, so be careful. I really like these fans. They're called the Apex Metal because they are in fact metal. If, if you've ever felt these, they are very heavy fans and the dense feeling gives the fans a good noise profile, good premium feel here. Yeah, but the key here is it has a good noise profile even at the higher RPMs. One of the other neat thing is that the fan holes are countersunk. Typically PC fans just have a straight hole and they, these come with countersunk screws so that when they're installed to a radiator, they are flush with the surface. The result here is a unit with a very uniform aesthetic. It's matte black with some gold accents. There are some subtle lighting on the block, but it, it it's actually a functional thing though. There's a shiny bar on the block that can be used as a system indicator if you set it up in ASUS's Armory Crate. And for example, you can use it to show your CPU utilization or other uh, system parameters as you choose. The unit supports LGA 11.5X, 1200 and 1700 on the Intel side, which means it'll also be compatible with the upcoming Intel 1851 socket, which basically uses the same cooler pattern as the 1700. 
there is only one mounting bracket on the block side, interestingly, and that's going to interface fairly seamlessly with Intel setup since you just need to install four standoffs to your board and then line those up with the pump side mounting bracket. But on the AMD side where it is actually compatible with AM4 and AM5, the setup is quite different from most AIOs that I've seen. Uh, since they only have that one mounting bracket and it's drilled to the Intel pattern, essentially you have to adapt your AM4 and AM5 pattern to an Intel pattern. And to do that, you use a set of standoffs in the AM5 and AM4 stock uh, backplate and use this adapter bracket. So eventually you end up with a square mount on your board uh, when you mount additional standoffs and then mount the pump to those standoffs with cap screws. So AMD setups are gonna be a little bit more fussy at first. So as mentioned, I tested this in the Lian Li A3 MATX and I like that they stuck to a standard thickness rad here at 27 millimeters since that along with the 25 millimeter fans improves the fitment across a variety of cases. Tested here at a range of RPM intervals. Uh, my main comparison here is against the Cooler Master Ion 360. It's one of the highest performing 360s that I've tested. And I've also tested the Lian Li GA2 Trinity performance at a few similar intervals. So I'll just include those data points as well from this case. All right, so noise normalized testing. The fans are adjusted to equal noise intervals to provide comparable results here. Starting at a lower noise level and moderate RPM, it's only 2.7 dBA above the noise floor. The Pro Art Cooler does struggle a little bit here, and it would seem that the Apex fans aren't as capable at this moderate RPM. The next tested level is the moderate high level. It's kind of your meat and potatoes RPM for an AIO, plus 2.8 dBA. Here, the fans are spinning at 1700 RPM, and they appear to hit their stride here. At this point, the unit is neck and neck with the GA2 Trinity performance, which I do want to notice a very thick radiator with thicker fans. So while that unit is representative of the upper echelon of 360 performance, now the compatibility there is worse. So for the Pro Art to keep up with that thicker rad and thicker fan does say something. I did want to show you a specific example here of a higher noise level on this unit. It's a little less applicable since you typically wouldn't be running at this noise level regularly uh, because because uh, you're getting a 360 for some noise benefits. But this is illustrative of something I think is going on here. So when you crank up the fans on the ION to 2400 RPM, which is its max, its performance further improves quite a bit. However, for the Pro Art, we improve less than a degree at 2235 RPM. At 100%, these fans go up to 3000 RPM, and I see absolutely no reason to do that, at least with this current iteration, since you improve only about a degree, but add a ton of noise. Uh, long story short, I think the improvements should be a lot better with the higher RPMs here, and something else is holding it back. If I had to make an educated guess, it's gonna be that block and the cold plate assembly. If you follow the standard or the manual's uh, installation, the elbows down is the standard setup. So one thing I did was I, I rotated it, didn't see any difference there. Uh, I tested to see if it was the more involved mounting process for AM5 with you know, the adapter plate and all that. So I actually just physically held down the pump block uh, without any hardware to see if that was uh, somehow giving poor contact. So brute force absolutely did not help there. This is a fairly standard radiator as well. So that's, you know, I, I can't see why that would be a, an issue there. So that's why I'm zeroing on the pump block. So I don't want to be clear. The reason I point this out isn't because the performance isn't good here. As mentioned, it is actually quite good. But with these higher level fans that you're paying for, empirically, this should be in competition for the absolute best. So these are absolutely solid, quite literally solid metal fans. And when I swapped in the Noctua NFA 12 by 25s, which are currently one of the best 120 millimeter fans you can get, the Alpha Cools actually beat them by about a degree. So this has all the firepower to be the best in class for 360. And I think if the block can be improved, this cooler is absolutely ready to be best in class. So the Alpha Cools do have a decent noise profile. They sound well dampened. I'll take a quick listen here through the noise samples. And I'll also throw in some of the pump noise samples, but it's really hard to hear those because this one is in fact very quiet.
pros of this cooler with the high-end fans that are included this is a performance first looks second unit but i think the looks are quite good too there's no distracting rgb lighting of course this is uh, subjective right uh cabling is simple it's clean it's just a sleek matte black unit that can work equally well in a workstation or a gaming build uh, it'll work with cpus such as the 7900x that i tested with and i think you'll also get good performance with the 9900x as well i also like that they went with the standard thickness for the radiator and the fans for uh, good compatibility there with the pro art you're getting a premium looking unit premium materials like with the thicker tubing and of course the premium fans from alpha cool uh, some cons here. So just a minor one. It's that slightly convoluted installation process for AM4 and AM5. It's just a little odd uh, in some sense to adapt an Intel-centric mounting design to an AMD design without just changing that bracket. But I think for many folks, that installation is a one-time thing. Um, the pricing, however, is one slight concern as well. This unit is priced at $230 US dollars. So it's more than the Lian Li GA2 Trinity Performance, which is often 160 lately, and it's also more than the Cooler Master Atmos 360, which at $150 performs similarly to the Ion, but amidst the LCD screen. And of course, I know it's a different aesthetic, but the Ion with the LCD screen only retails a little bit more for, for around 250 So what you're paying for are these high-end Alpha Cool fans, which these are not cheap. These are premium fans, and they usually retail for $40 each or so. And in that sense, compared to those units which don't use another manufacturer's high performance fans, I can see where the difference in the price comes from. So they obviously do have a good noise profile and good performance. However, as mentioned earlier, my impression is the pump block or cold play setup is that potential limiting factor. So you're actually not getting all the potential from these incredible fans. So while I do recommend the ProArt 360, that is with a little bit of reservation since while I can see where the pricing is justified, I'd just like to see users be able to take full advantage of these fans because you're kind of paying a premium for these fans and this entire ProArt ensemble has a ton of potential because of those. So otherwise you're just, you know, paying for a super clean look, which I guess some will say it's worth a million bucks, especially for an A3 build like this where it fits in uh, quite clean. Uh, and I also like to see this in a 240 since as mentioned the ProArt brand, it is quite popular in uh, the SFF space. So having this in a 240 out of the box with the high performance fans, I think that would be a big hit. So hope you found this review helpful. So please give a like and make sure you're subscribed. Links for the cooler and the setup down below. Big thanks for watching.